morning, everyone. How are you going? Enjoying DrupalCon? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just a quick thing about this is um, historically the first time contributor workshops have been very focused towards uh, getting people set up to do coding, but we realize that not everyone does. So you only need to download the tools if you're wanting to do coding as the form of contribution that you want to do. And, and that's like ready for Thursday. So you don't have to do it right now necessarily, but it will help. Did it go? Mm. Oops. Working, okay. So this is the first time computer workshop. I'm Brian Gilbert, uh, Reality Loop on Drupal.org. And this is Jordana. Uh, Jordana on Drupal.org. Jordana on Drupal.org or Jordana underscore F on Twitter as well. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about the code of conduct stuff? Yeah. So the code of conduct applies everywhere. Um, you have a DrupalCon code of conduct, which is a little bit more prescriptive. That applies everywhere uh, in uh, in the venue, but also at the, uh, all of the after parties. Um, and if there's at any moment that you feel unsafe or you feel like the code of conduct has been breached, you can uh, contact event staff, any event staff, and they will know what to do and to help you out. Um, there's also a Drupal code of conduct, so when you're working in issue queues, the forums, everywhere, there's a general code of conduct that we also um, have where we, it basically just means be nice and keep everything safe. So the key thing to realize is even if you can't make a patch, you can still contribute. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who don't do any coding at all and have been huge uh, assets to the project and that might be you as well. Uh, a contribution day, which is what happens on Thursday, is really just a gathering of people to do focus work on projects or issues. Um, and um, like DrupalCon is a great opportunity for that because we have so many people from diverse backgrounds um, coming from many different countries, uh, cultures, races, and everything. Uh, it's a really great chance to meet new people, make friends, uh, it also helps uh, when you're working on stuff remotely to use the connections that you make at sprint days to help uh, review your patches. You can send messages to friends and so on. Uh, we recommend that it's a really good idea to work in groups of two or three people. That way you might have someone who's doing code-related tasks. I'm an older blind. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, someone doing review tasks and... Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Good luck. Welcome. <coughs> um, <coughs> and it helps to have people to talk with to discuss the issue and form a consensus about the approach to take in trying to resolve it. Uh, so basically, it's a group of people sit around a table, find an issue to work on together, uh, discussions establish that consensus, and then work on you know, updating the issue summary if that's required. Um, which doesn't need any coding skills generally. Um, writing a patch, that's the coder task generally. Um, adding tests, again, if that's required. Manual testing, which anyone can do. Uh, reviewing the work, which can be a part of uh, manual testing the patch and then showing screens off before and after and things like that. <coughs> and then marking the issue as uh, ready to be committed. So RTBC means ready to be committed. I, I always thought it was reviewed and tested by the community. It is reviewed and tested by the community. Okay, okay, I'm okay. sorry. The well, I, are I always thought <laughs> like both. They were kind of interchangeable. But. Um, oh, sorry. And yeah. it, it, it's a little bit different when you do documentation. Documentation you generally do in a group, and you edit the pages as you go. Hmm. <coughs> so with only a Drupal.org account, you can do all of these things. 
uh, if you add using the issue queue, it goes onto these. Um, if anyone wants the slides, we've got the URL on the bottom of every page, so you can look at them directly on your screen and look at them later. Um, you can also add comments to the slides, so if you have any feedback you want to add, and there's the URL at the top if you want to ask any questions. Um, so basically, it doesn't matter what level you're at, you'll be able to help contribute in some way. I'm not going to read through all of the dot points just because that would be uh, So if you add a local development environment to the previous things, then you can work on code fixes and submit patches. And then with some additional specialized tools, you can help uh, work on Drupal 9 readiness for contrib or your own website, um, user guide writing and user guide translation, which the link at the bottom um, gives information on how to do that. I'll go back to the slide before. Just, yeah. just, just a review, um, because we, like we said, uh, we really want to highlight the fact that even if you're not a coder, you, uh, contribution, your contribution is generally very welcome and very helpful. Like project managers are always something that people really want. Marketing people, people that write documentation, people that translate. Um, so something like updating the issue queue to make it more clear what's happening is something that's also very, um, very important. Taking screenshots to make sure that the before and afters work. So there's a lot you could do. And also, like your Drupal Association membership or uh, donating through pa Patreon to the modules we all use is are also welcome contributions. I mean, and if you look at it, the listings we have here, there's far more you can do as someone who doesn't have coding skills than the typical tasks that someone who is a coder would do. So, uh, How we generally communicate with each other at the con and after the con, because you might be in a different part of the room. Obviously, it's still good to talk face-to-face, -face, but we have the Drupal Slack, uh, which you can sign up at with the URL there. Uh, if you're not there already, I would suggest you do it. Uh, we've set up a channel just for the first-time contributors uh, in Amsterdam, which is, you can go there and just say hello or whatever. And then while while we're doing core contributions, you would be in hash contribute. That's the channel to go to. Um, do we, people would go mentoring as well? Or, or is that mentors? I think. Yeah. No, so, no, and, sorry, and sorry. And so in contribute and in, <coughs> in the first time contributors, so that's where we'll all be as well. Um, you can all find, you can find us all on Slack and most of the mentors you'll see walking around. We're on Slack as well. We so. have a green badge that says mentor. Artistic, yeah. yeah. Um, also, there's the Drupal.org slash chat page has some information about other regional chat um, online things that are more regional focused and so on. Uh, so now we're just going to go through some things that most of you probably already know, but there might be some people who are here who are brand new. So uh, it's mainly key uh, websites and URLs and things that you might want to know about. So we have Drupal.org, obviously, the, the main site for everything Drupal related. Um, hopefully you all have a Drupal user account already, but if you don't, I would suggest you go and create one, because you can't really do much in the way of contrib contribution without it. Uh, it <coughs> um, so uh, some things that people might not know is on your user profile, there's a bunch of stuff you can edit to say things you've been to and so on. So this is my profile page and this is like all the Drupal events that I've been to. So this is my 14th DrupalCon. Um, and it's, it's a little bit tricky to find where to get to some of these. So if we go edit. So just a quick thing, the two things you could definitely do is join the Slack and create a Drupal.org account if you haven't already. I can't see everything from here, that's right. So for um, conferences and so on you've been to, you can you go edit and you scroll down to where the vertical tabs are and Drupal. And then down here there's a list of all of the events. So as soon as you know you're going to one, you should come here and tick it. And then, you know, if you've got other friends who have you on their pro um, as you know, they look at your profile, they'll know you're going to be there, so they can catch up. Um, you can also add your mentors. So I would encourage you all, if you want to, you can add me. So it's just you just type reality loop. 
This is a great way to connect with the people you're meeting right now, the mentors, because this is a way you always have them on your profile page, so you'll always find them again if you need to contact them. So, Reality Loop is Brian here, and he's a very great asset to have. <laughs> also, the pronouns in the language. Yep. Um, I can't see easily here. Is that on the person? The second, yeah. Right. You sure? Oh, it's there. Oh. So there's also the pronoun section under personal information where you can add how you prefer to be referred to, I guess. Uh, the preferred so, pronouns. Yep. Uh, and that's free text, so you can do whatever you like. Um, I also have added that on my Slack username. A lot of people have been doing that. So. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff, you can, a bit about yourself. Uh, your IRC nickname, which not as many people use IRC anymore, but I'm probably going to try and get the Slack username added on this after the workshops on Thursday. So. You can also add your la your la the language you usually speak because in issue queues it helps to let people know that maybe uh, recognize that maybe you're speaking a different language or English is not your first language, so that you know that there might be language barriers. Yeah, so that's under language and location. I think you can list other languages spoken as well, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so. So we have the Drupal Association where you can um, become an association member, and that starts from $15 US up to as much as you want to pay, basically. And being an association member is also a way of contributing because this there the, the, what makes any of this possible, so. They, I mean, their primary remit is to make sure Drupal remains sustainable and lives. So it's pretty important to us who mostly <coughs> earn a living from it. Uh, so Drupal org slash community. Um, there's a whole bunch of information about all different initi initiatives that you could contribute to. Um, governance information, information about licensing, licenses and so on. Uh, the security working group. Uh, technical working groups, documentation around community and getting involved, um, all of that sort of stuff. So, um, so these pages have documentation. I would probably go with the second one as the primary start point because it gets you into all of this stuff as well. We just need to update that slide. Um, so that's all been migrated essentially into the slash documentation area. And if you're a developer, api.drupal.org is kind of the bible. Um, it'll help you figure out how you should approach and tackle issues, pretty much. Um, the core Drupal project. Uh, so that's where you can download Drupal core and uh, create and manage issues, I guess. Anything you might do, you might want to, you've found an issue in core, you can search to see whether it's already been identified. There might be patches to help you resolve it on your particular installation, all of that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, so every project on Drupal.org has an issue queue. It's, uh, if we go back here, I can't see what's there. So. So it's all down here. Most of you probably already know this. But. So you can go to all the open issues here or you can do a search straight away for looking for issues. And then the key thing is the advanced search that we wanted to show off. So as someone who's a first time contributor, there's a few key things that can help you find issues that are relevant to work on. So we would want to be looking for, at least at this conference, uh, 8.9.x issues. So 8.9.x dev. If you have an interest in a particular area of Drupal, say theming or something like that, then you could choose uh, the subsystem that's relevant to help you filter down more. But we would most likely want to look for active open issues, or open issues, I guess. Uh, you might want to, if you're only looking to um, review patches, then you could look for ones that need to review. Would give you a much shorter list. Um, Sorry, it's a bit hard for me to see from here, so. And the issue tags. Yep. 
uh, and then issue tags. So, at uh, are we saying what it is now or? Look, my eyes are, are bad and I have a hard time reading the text in the browser. Can you? Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, are we? Hopefully. Are we saying the issue tag right away? What's the issue tag that we should be using for them to find? Just novice. Is that the tag? Yeah. Yep. So there's a, a tag we normally have called novice. And these are populated outside of DrupalCons as well, aren't they? I think generally. So isn't there an uppercase one or is it lowercase now? Mm. Just well, thing. there's only one there. So. Uh, so if we now do that search, we should get a much shorter list of issues that we could look through to try and identify something we could work on. So the novice tags are great ways for you guys, for people to start working on Drupal because it's not as, as, uh, in, you're not, you're not going to get stuck as yeah, much. Yeah, you might not get as stuck as much. So <coughs> it's a great tag to use to get going. Now you'll find that a lot in the core project. It might not be tagged as that as much in contrib's. And I would encourage you if you want to get involved in contributing to a contrib to contact the module developers themselves or maintainers I should say. Can you show where you see the maintainers? Yep. Um. yep. Is that Drupal? Yep. Drupal. Um. Okay you can see this list which is not necessarily the maintainers only uh, if you click up here, it says maintainer. So this will show a list of anyone who has a uh, uh, attributed commit to the project, and that's just date ranged. Uh, if you go into maintainers, then that will be people who can actually do stuff on the project. So I'm there as well. So. <coughs> and the the way I would generally contact someone would be click on their username. Uh, I should have clicked someone else because I can't send myself a message. Uh, I don't know who's still there. And then uh, not everyone has it. So. so there's a setting in your profile that allows you to have a contact form on your profile page that people can send you a message without exposing your email address. So I have that turned on. <coughs> but uh, where's my phone going? Probably. Yep, there you go. So contact. Uh, just gives you a form where you can fill it out. Uh, something that you may not know of if you are a like someone who does code, uh, if you find a project on Drupal.org that you want to get involved with, that's and if it's semi dead, I guess you can put an issue on the project saying I, I'm requesting maintainer access. And if there's no response within two weeks, you can then assign that issue to the webmasters queue and you will basically get access. So you can help take over and bring back to life a module that's not really getting looked after. So it's pretty awesome. Um, so we've gone through all of those. There's a kind of a rough image. It's in the slides as well that gives that, although the issues that we're filtering on are a bit different. <clears throat> so how to choose an issue is really about looking at what status it's in, um, reading the issue summary. The way I do that personally is I read the, the first summary and then I usually scroll to the last of the comments and start reading backwards to get an idea of where it's at now. Um, and that's a really good task to help developers if you're a non-coder is to do that and then you can update the summary at the top to make life a lot easier for them. Um, when you're at events like this, uh, we ask that you add a comment to the issue to say that you're at um, DrupalCon Amsterdam and I am currently looking at this issue. Uh, you, you don't actually assign the issue to yourself, so if... I'll just go to me. So 
many contribute, you can do it, do all of this on the main practice as well. Is it? No, can't see. Okay. So in the issue metadata, there's a section where you can. Where is it? Ah, oh, assigned. So in a project, it's limited, but in some projects, that's a field that you can populate yourself. You don't generally do that because that means you're taking over and no one else will pick it up if you do that. So it's... Um, so don't do this yeah. thing that he's showing you. <laughs> so the way to do it is to go, I'm at DrupalCon Amsterdam 2019 and am working on this today at least. Um, and then there's also the issue tag. We, did we create one for... Yep. So, uh, comma, is it just DrupalCon Amsterdam or no? <laughs> I don't have Slack open. <laughs> okay. So it should auto search. So it's the Amsterdam 2019, not the DrupalCon Amsterdam 2019. And that will help us track what issues people worked on throughout the conference, which is good for showing the DA that we do cool stuff to help people get involved with Core. So please do that. Um, and throughout the, the sprints and mentored sprints on Thursday, there'll be mentors there. So if you get stuck, you can ask us and we'll do our best to help you. Uh, we don't all know everything, but it's a good opportunity for us to show you how we find out the answers to questions that we don't know as well, so you know how to go about that later as well. And the mentors in the room right now, or besides us, there are a few in here, so the mentors can raise their hand. <laughs> the mentors can raise their hands. It's basically the people between the <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah. So we're here, we are also at the booth, so you can always approach us. Generally, every, everyone in Drupal is approachable. There are no big deals. You could just walk up to anybody and just kind of talk. And when you comment on an issue, it will also show up in your dashboard. So when you go to your profile dashboard, um, so it'll list in here as issues that you're somehow involved in. Uh, the other really key thing to do is you might not finish um, like fixing the issue on the day, but it's really important to, before you leave, um, just update with a comment to say what you did, what you found, where it's at, because it might make it a lot easier for someone else to pick up. So that can be really helpful. You don't have to resolve the issue to, to actually make a big difference in helping it get resolved. Um, so patch creation, although you might not be doing it, is actually a lot easier than you think. Uh, so a lot of these are developer tasks, but we're still shuffling the slides around. So um, <coughs> essentially you're going to download the, the project from uh, the repo, which as part of the tool setup happens for you, for doing core contributions at least. And we're going to make some code changes, save those changes, then make a patch. Now that might sound scary, but when you go to any project page on Drupal.org, uh, be nice if I could see this. Is that diff? Yep. Ah. You know how you can see. But I'll just do it here. Oh, thank you. Yes, that helps. Okay, so. It, on every project on Drupal.org, there's a tab that says version control. When you click that, it actually tells you how to download the Git uh, repo for it, and you can pick the version number. So in Drupal Core, we're picking 8.9.x-dev, and then it gives you the command line that you would run on your machine. And down below that, we have all the information about how to uh, commit change locally and make patches so that's on every project page so you don't have to remember it off by heart you can go and use this as a reference there is also some other tools that are available but I'm not going to go into them today sorry 
<laughs> <laughs> they give you command line helpers to make it a bit easier. But if you're interested, come find us. Yep. Um, so, um, one thing that you might do as a non developer is test patches on simplytest.me. And in three slides, I have a video that explains how to do that. So, I won't go into it now. But you don't, this is how you can do a lot of things without actually having Drupal running on your machine. So. The, the most important thing is also to communicate well in the comments. So, explain exactly what you were doing. Uh, so the way why we why we kind of like harp on that a little bit is uh, it makes everything much clearer and cleaner and better for everybody to kind of work on it together and to test things out and uh, to to move the issue forward. Um, I need to get back to Drupal. Is that this? So the other thing you would do after you've done that, um, so he was saying, you know, we, we want to update after we've tested a patch, saying how we tested it, uh, adding screenshots and updating the status. So that would be, let's just imagine I was doing that with this issue. So I'll go back down to where I can add comments. Keyboard shortcuts. Let me see. Um, okay, so I would add my comment here, and in the issue metadata, assuming that you tested it and it was good and every, did everything you would expect, you would change this to reviewed and tested by the community. Make your notes and then click can save. You sh can you show how to attach a screenshot? Yep. So there's a file section. Somewhere here. And so you can just browse and upload your screenshots that you took locally. And there is a way to put them in the body, but it's a bit harder. <coughs> I think Dreadnought makes that easier. But Okay, so. Uh, so the other tools that are very helpful for reviewing code and patches is there's an extension called Dreaditor which currently only works with Chrome, but I ported it to Firefox this morning, so it should be available as a Firefox extension within the next couple of days. And then there's simply test.me, which allows you to install and run a Drupal site remotely, and you can add patches as part of that. So um, I'll do a quick demo of oops, um, Treditor just to show you what it gives you. So I'll just go to the top at the moment, keep the shortcuts again. Did you click? Yeah. Okay, so I have the tab to add Dreader to here. Just reloading the page, hopefully. Yep. Why are they? Oh, there we go. So you get these buttons that will automatically set up a simply test.me instance with the patch applied. So it makes life a lot easier. Uh, review goes into this interface where you can look at the lines of code. So you don't have to do this level of review as a non coder, but um, it it can be helpful. So the Dreaditor extension just for the Simply Test Me link is really, hmm. really nice because it's a one-click solution to kind of make you test, test the patches and everything. So it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Um, it does other stuff besides that, but that's two things I can show very quickly. So uh, Simply Test Me, I have this video that um, is basically a demonstration. Why is that not at the start? It's just the screen. So I'm just looking for an issue, um, filtering for a 9.x issue, 8.9.x issue. OK, 
and then I'm scrolling down to the patch that's the newest patch which is that one copying the URL and going to simply test.me I want to type in Drupal to find the core project and then select 8.9.x there which is way down in the list for some reason and then I expand the advanced option section and there's an add patch and you just paste the URL of the patch you can add more than one patch so once you've added one you can just add another add another if there's some that work together and then I go launch sandbox and within you know two or three minutes I'll have a working Drupal instance I cut out sections of this to make it look faster so if you had the Dreaditor extension you just press that button and those things it does it for you those steps would have done been done for you and then once it's finished finished uh, it will load to the sandbox that it's created uh, the login for this is admin and admin so use admin as the username and admin as the password and you can log into the site and browse around and do all your testing <coughs> which should come up on there but I don't know. there you go so a really good way to do a quick test of something if you don't have an active development environment locally and this is also community run mm -hmm. so this is also um, a lot of volunteer time people are just doing this because they love you um, so this slide just ignore it at the moment but our aim is to split up the people who don't want to do code um, and get them actively doing stuff at this stage and then the rest of the presentation is about setting up tools so it, those of you who don't want to do that, you could probably leave now if you like, or I can jump to some extra slides at the end first. Could you give an example of, if I'm a non-coder and I'm interested in the promote Drupal um, issue queue, mm -hmm. um, or uh, one of the community projects that are non-code based, and, yep. and, how, and how I would use the issue queue there. Okay. Um. And a quick, a quick um, example of what a good comment is, is not just it works. A good comment would be, I tested it on this, um, on oh, like for example on um, this branch, like the Drupal 8.x, I did these I did these steps and I made sure it worked by doing this and this and this. So a little bit of expanding. In and the, with screenshots of before <coughs> and after potentially. And screenshots yep. would be helpful. Um, I can't see the screen. I know, but I can't read it to find where to put my pointer. To find the promote Drupal stuff. Ah, where is my pointer? Just gonna hope that I can find it. Matthew, where is, like, is, is it, what's the project name for that? Is there a project name? Okay, thanks. So I went, I'm typing uh, drupal.org slash promote, ah, uh, sorry, drupal.org slash project slash promote underscore Drupal. And then there's open issues here so I assume some I haven't worked with this Matthew have you just um, so the way I'm looking at this it looks like they've got steps for people who are getting involved to do before they um, start contributing so go and read the guidelines I assume if I click through there it's going to give me links to where the guidelines are yep um, and you don't have to actually comment or anything on that one. Um, so a task you can do is help translate the Drupal pitch deck. Click it, click it. Yep. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
and so I would still recommend writing a comment with your interest because it, it shows it will activate yes. your comment. Okay, yep. Um, so this has got some interactive information and then links to help you how to get involved. and people to contact and so on so is that number i can't tell from here because i can't see it but so they for example the the trans the promote drupal they have a zoom training they have meetups and office hours and that kind of stuff so um all of that information is going to be either in the issue queue or <coughs> on the issue page the page itself to so there are many different ways of, of contributing that has nothing to do with code so this is, for example, translation and uh, working on the materials like finding finding typos, making text clear, uh, making the 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 information clear, that mm. kind of stuff. Um, another thing you could do here is I haven't seen yet, but probably there is and might even be in that text is go search through the channels that are on Slack. You might find that there's channels for that, and you can go and talk to people in real time to, you know, um, find out what's the best way to proceed. Um, so, was there people who wanted to get tools set up today? Show of hands. Okay, cool. I'm going to jump to the other slides first so the other people can take off if they want to. So are there any questions um, now that you guys are something that you want to have explained? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, can you do it in the mic just so it gets recorded, please? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. So, maybe my question is related to a uh, key question. It's about uh, documentation, contributing documentation. I, I would like to know more about this. What kind of documentation? Documentation of code uh, or uh, menus or uh, demos or something like mm -hmm. that? Because Today on the keynote, uh, we saw a diagram that shows the new Drupal customers and uh, users are in the beginning are not so happy with uh, <laughs> the Drupal interface and so on. Mm -hmm. But then they realize that Drupal is awesome. I think the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to this part. How to write better manual documentation to show the clients what actually Drupal's can do sure. at the beginning. So that's, there's multiple levels of this. Um, let me just try and... So the documentation that's on Drupal.org, uh, so there, there is documentation that's on Drupal.org that's very easy to edit. So every page on Drupal.org that is a documentation type page. Anyone who uh, has an account on Drupal.org has the ability to edit. So you can make improvements. Um, so I'll, I'll just go somewhere and... Yeah. Uh, I'm type it. You're not typing in there. Ah. So the documentation, there's a documentation working group, there's a documentation Slack channel, uh, and they're always looking for help, and those people will be on the, on Thursday, there will be quite a few tables that are sprinting on, doc, um, contributing on documentation, so uh, we can definitely get you to the right people, but... Has that changed? Like I don't get edit on any of this. <laughs> <laughs> if you know better than me, stand up. <laughs> uh, like mentioned, there's about five or six different documentation, areas of documentation. Mm. Um, Chris Dark there mentioned one to me just a few minutes ago. There's the localized.trueblood.org, so if you are, if you speak another language, uh, or if you speak multiple languages, being able to localize the Drupal interface, is one way of documenting. Uh, the Drupal 8 user guide is um, 
is now a code-based documentation uh, and supports <coughs> projects for there's a legible dollar projects for the user guide. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the so the user guides one. I had the the link at the bottom of the slide earlier. So if you want to look at that later, you could go back to the slides and you'd be able to find that link. And yeah. um, there's a couple community-related documentation efforts uh, that are uh, more relevant, recent um, projects and initiatives. Uh, Rachel Lawson uh, is the kind of uh, initiative lead on on that as the community organizer. So she has the. Uh, I think the project is. Uh, I can't. Um, sorry, I can't. I, I have it on my laptop. I yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, in Slack, um, but there's there's two main drivers. One is improving. If you're on Drupal.org and you see a community link at the very top, is improving that whole section, um, and and that relates to how how we can change, um, and improve uh, documentation for different people. Um, and roles and skills, um, and more recently, improving the documentation about what we're talking about right now, getting involved. Yes. <laughs> so so if basically you helping want to people. Get, in, get involved, helping how to get involved. That, so <laughs> much appreciated. They're rewriting the whole getting involved guide, like from scratch a little bit. So um, you wanting to get involved is a great way to help get the getting involved documentation. Um, so this is a new initiative um, and it's, I'm pretty sure, I think there's an issue to you, an issue for it up now. All right. I'll, I'll try to find help. Thank you. I wanted to just mention one thing. It's really hard when you're trying to find a new space to contribute in uh, because it's like there's so much. It's like do you just want to do something random or do you just pull something out of an issue queue. But if you have something that annoys you, <laughs> that's really a good place to start. But if you have something that annoys you and it isn't being worked on or it is being worked on, maybe you can help work on it, maybe you can test it. If you find some lousy documentation, and I'm sure there's plenty, you know, <laughs> there's plenty of everything that's on page, right? But if you have something that annoys you and you can work on it at the contribution day, you'll feel some value and you can expect to get sucked into that and maybe make a longer term contribution to that. So try to, you, if you can, if you're looking for something and something annoys you, go with that. I've got a kind of, well, I think it's a cool story about that. So um, I posted an issue about a feature I wanted to see, which was to make um, the permissions for revisions be per content type instead of like global. <coughs> and that was just after code freeze for Drupal 7, I think. And um, Dries was the first person to comment on it saying he thought it was a great idea. And I got super motivated about it, but I uh, had to, it took two years to get in, but it's now in core, so. Oh, and if you don't know, if you have that idea and you don't know how to uh, get started, that's why we have um, Drupal chat, uh, Drupal you know, Slack chat, and, and asking a question. And if, if you do work with a mentor, the mentor may not know, but they may know someone who does know, you know down the chain, so we can help introduce and, and point you in the right direction. Yeah, I think the key thing asking is, oh, sorry. is, yeah, um, asking in, in chat is, is, can be very helpful, and, and please do ask. So to show you, if you go to Drupal.org, to go to community and getting involved. Did I press it? I can't tell. Browsers don't give good feedback anymore. There you go. There you go. Um, see this whole, there's a, you can read how to get involved. But right here, it's documentation. Can you click? Okay, yeah. And this is, all, this is the way to get involved with documentation. It, it explains how to contribute. So right here you see the new contributors tasks page. That's where you're gonna probably wanna go to figure out like what to start on. And there is an issue for the changing up the getting involved guide, like helping write that. And you would be valuable because you're just getting involved. So you, you would know best what 
what questions you have okay. as someone who wants to be a new contributor and what path, how to find out what path to take. Uh, the other area is possibly the marketing effort might be somewhere that's relevant because the marketing can help people understand how to use the product. So. So, um, in case we haven't already made it clear, there's a first time contributor workshop on Thursday. Uh, that's in the Diamond Lounge, wherever that is, I'm not sure. Um, and the, you probably won't want to go to the workshop because it's essentially what we've just run now. But there's um, mentored contribution in Europe for two that is basically mentors helping people who have done this workshop to find issues to work on and pairing them up with people, helping you find people to work with and being there to, to ask questions of if you need help. <clears throat> so after today, um, you know, all of this contribution can happen remotely online. It's the vast majority of my contributions have happened when I've been at home in Australia somewhere. Um, you know, there's not DrupalCons every weekend. You can't meet with all these cool people and, and do that every, time, every week. Um, so there's core mentoring hours on Slack, um, so 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time, so based in America, but there, I believe there is or has been uh, times that fit the European time slot better as well, and if you go there and say that you would like to see that, I'm sure people would step up and help with that. So to join that, you would join the hash contribute on that time and say, oh, hi, I'm here to contribute. Uh, mentors are always available, <coughs> at least someone's available generally, always uh, in Slack, so uh, that's another way. And then there's always contribution days at events. And then you could organise, if you, if you have a local group or you're very motivated yourself, you could organise an event on a global, global contribution day. Uh, this is... So there's links there you can go to. These are all in the slides. And then this basically has all the links that we had in the in the document. So the, the community page, the like the triple.org slash community page has recently gotten a refresh. And it's like your one the place you want to start at if you have like you want to contribute. It will tell you how do you it has like a few questions like I want to help contribute by or I want to help I want to run up help run up a, a camp or an or, uh, organize a meetup. It has links there to show you where to go. So that's a great pay, a great place to just start. Um, thank you. Um, we'll stay around for, I think we've still got some time to help people who want to get tools set up. But everyone else, thanks for coming. Hopefully we see you on Thursday. And if you have any questions, please feel free. Yeah. Was there any? So I'll just keep going. So um, the the tools that we've set up is basically a, a rapid way to get people set up with a local development environment that um, doesn't use lots of external network activity. So it's sending from my machine and other mentors' machines so it all stays within the network. That's just to make sure Wi-Fi doesn't die. Um, it, it gives us um, basically access to all these things with the tools that we need to do local development. So it's called Quick Sprint. Uh, it's based on a tool called DDEV. There's a stall down in the, the contribution hall, oh, sorry, exhibition hall from DDEV. Uh, Randy, who was here us talking before, he's one of the developers. Uh, it does have some requirements, so Windows 7 64-bit or higher, Mac Sierra 10.12 or higher, and a decent amount of memory and the ability to actually install stuff on your computer. So if you've got a locked down work machine, that might be a problem. And if that's the case, we'd recommend using Simply Test Me. So 
what it is, it's um, the installers for Docker, Git, etc. Uh, the ddev command line tool helper. Um, and this is all packaged once you download the sync that, that I mentioned earlier, which is at drupal.org slash tools. Uh, and it will essentially create a Drupal 8.9.x environment for you that you can use to work on. And you can blow it away and create a new one really easily. And it's well documented and well tested. So if you've been syncing the tools, which it doesn't look like anyone is. Was there people who are, who were syncing it during this? Yeah, is it, has it finished downloading or is it still? Yeah, yeah cool. Um, so basically all you have to do is go into the directory that you downloaded it to and extract the big file that's there, which is explained on the tools page as well. Oh, sorry. And when you extract it, you'll have a Drupal Sprint package folder. And if you don't already have Docker installed, inside that there'll be an installs directory where you can install Docker. But if you do have Docker, then it should be, and it's a recent version, you don't need to add additionally install that. And then um, if you're on Windows, there's also Git bash. So you have to install the Git stuff to get Git bash you would open the git bash and then run the dot install sh and it does all of the magic. Um, and on Mac, you just open a terminal and run that. So I'm happy to walk around if people need help doing that. That's the basics. Um, and the one thing in Docker, you need to change the, the memory allocation to 3D. So is there questions about that or do you just wanna, do you want me to help while you're doing it or have you already installed it? My computer is locked. I don't have virtualization on the CPU. Oh, uh, so okay. So, uh, Matthew, <coughs> are you for people who don't have virtualization enabled on the CPU? Is that where we use Docker Toolbox instead, or? Uh, that would be a chance to use some Okay. Be able to turn it on. I can help you. I have someone last year turn on the virtualization on Windows and BIOS. Uh, it's pretty easy to do if you have access to the BIOS. But if you don't have access to the BIOS, then yeah, there's two alternatives would be Simple Test V and uh, Drupal Core itself has uh, the ability now to install. Uh, if you have PHP uh, without any sort of special environment to install a kind of demo site uh, it's called Quick Start. Uh, so in the documentation in the readme for the, the Sprint user readme uh, for the tools, there's kind of at the very top there's a link, you know, what, what do I do? And it, it's, it'll link to the, the Quick Start. Yep. Um, quick Start meant for kind of demoing and, and doing promotional work. Uh, kind of playing around is not not really the best for development. Uh, so the, if you want to work on code on Thursday, it'd be great if you can get the tools installed by Thursday. Um, if you're having trouble with the installation steps, you can probably come to the mentor booth in the exhibition hall um, or find me. If you see me around, I'm happy for you to just come and talk to me. I'll give you a hand. Uh, will this presentation be available anywhere? Because I have to go right now. The link is in the bottom of every slide. So, yeah. <laughs> so, the other thing I'd really appreciate if you've got feedback is you can add comments on any of the slides. If you think we've not touched on something as well as you would have liked, um, please let us know. Because this is a living document. It gets updated every every conference and it's more than welcome for people to use this slide if they want to try and present this to people in their own area. So. Thank you. Yeah.